Hello folks, welcome back to another video, another hobby nightmare. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, the Patreon button is also down below if you really like what I do. And you can become a member of the channel too. If you do either of those two things by supporting the channel financially, you will be involved in the prize draw that starts on the 6th of August. Sunday the 6th of August. So what you need to do is be a member of the Patreon or be a member of the channel. Either of those two things helps me out financially helps the channel grow, helps the channel stay here, and I can do one of these every single day like I love to do. And if you do that, then not only are you helping me out, but you're also being involved in a prize draw. The top prize is £50 worth of models from Composite Games sent to you anywhere in the world. I'll, I will ensure it, even if I have to send it to you myself. And a box of uh, Deathwing, Dark Angels Deathwing, which is, which is really, really cool, considering what's going on with the Dark Angels at the moment. Go and support Composite Games if you can. They're really good people. Use the promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 5% off at checkout for any of your model needs. Moving on. I'll be like most time. Quick sip of tea before I start. You know how this goes. You know how it is. You know how we need to go. To be fair, I think 1 minute and, and 12 seconds for an ad read is a new record for me, so... I deserve a bit of a, a drink of tea. Uh, Matt says, Hi North. Firstly, well done on setting up the crisis help on the Discord chat. It just goes to show how many chads uh, there are in the hobby willing to help out their fellow nerds. Yeah, man. I mean, I was surprised. I, I set up that crisis. There is a crisis helpline. Um, or not a phone line, but it, we, we may, might do a, a, a voice line uh, eventually. But there is a part of the Discord where you can go on and talk to people and, and you know if you're having a really bad time you can go on there or just a really bad day you can go on there talk to people have a word with them and let them know what's up right and i i've been surprised by the sheer amount of people who've been willing to step in and, and and talk people down off a ledge sort of a thing not literally hopefully not anyway but from what i've seen it's been very much you know helping which is great um also i fully i fully agree that therapy works I have had conversations with individuals in the past, stating it didn't slash doesn't work for them, but in the most part, it does have a positive impact. Cool. I often think that if you've gone to therapy and it hasn't worked for you, you've got the wrong therapist. The right therapist almost always works. Almost always. Alright? You've got the wrong therapist right now. It takes a while to find him. My first therapist was awful. Made, it, made things worse when I was in the States. Oh my god, he was terrible. He was the most... You know, passive, beta energy. You know, that's not the kind of thing I respond to. I, I resent that. Like, if I if I come across that kind of energy, I actively resent it. I'm like, no, 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 no. The more based you are, the, the, the more you will get me on side, essentially, right? I don't mean offensive. I don't mean a, I don't mean a dick. No, but the, the more, like, unapologetic and, you know, manly you are, I, I will respond to that more than... You know, maybe you should just take some accountability. What do you mean accountability? Like, she broke up with me, dude. Come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kidding, obviously. Anyone who knows me knows that on this channel, I, I go over my own faults all the time. Especially when it comes to relationships and things. So, yeah. It was one of those where I would go in already self-deprecating and being like, Hey, you know, I know this is all my fault. When it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, it, it literally wasn't. It was just me trying to trying to make myself feel better by put myself on a cross and he just bought into it and I thought yeah well you're you're no good for me and I moved on got another therapist who's great um, anyway on to the nightmare have you ever heard the saying bad news comes in threes I have and without fail it generally happens to me in that manner this is important for the story so please keep that in mind now for a little context I work in a job with rapid turnaround and shift modes. Afternoons, morning and night in a three week cycle. As you can imagine, this means my sleeping pattern is all sort of screwed up. Okay, well I, I've been there man, been there in a bad, a really bad sleeping pattern can really, really, really screw you up. I've been there, it's horrible. Especially going from mornings to nights. In order to be ready for morning, uh, night, I try and stay up all Sunday night, oh my god, through to Monday morning in order to make sure I sleep when needed. Having a three-year-old daughter doesn't help. 
Her mother does her best, but she is quite the heavy sleeper. It generally involves chores and some undisturbed hobby time. Dude, I, I wouldn't give a, a monkeys whether she's a deep sleeper or not. She'd be getting a poke. You know, 50-50. I get up, you get up. I get up, you get up. That's how it works. You know, especially if I'm the one on nights. No, no go fuck yourself. Get up. Um, anyway. Anyhow, the last night shift transition was not a good experience that day. I had been rudely awoken by my daughter early that morning, finding, finding she had crawled into our bed and proceeded to lie top to tail between me and my wife before kicking me in the face in her sleep. You can understand why it set me up badly for the rest of the day. Yeah, dude, come on, oh my God. Maybe if you've got room in your house, get a spare room and go and sleep in there. If, if you want your wife, here you go, if you want your wife to start, like, you know, literally helping you out because you're the one going to night shift work, get a spare room and go and sleep in there. Oh, my God, she'll get so freaked out, she will change things immediately. Right, just just say, look, nah, I'm, don't even say anything. Just go and sleep in there, and start sleeping in there normally. So when you go to bed, don't don't come into your wife's room. Go and sleep in there. That things will change. She she will change that shit immediately because they, they she won't like that. She will not like that at all. All right. So but rather than being like passive aggressive and being annoying and uh, being annoyed at her, just do that. Solve the problem yourself, and eventually she'll go, oh my god, and and will change. And if she doesn't. Uh, then I think you've got more problems than that. But anyway, moving on. That evening, to pass the long night ahead, I decided to begin painting my new Leviathan Tyranid models. I'm painting them in, in High Fleet Hydra colours, and I have attached a picture of one said model to this email. I was sleep deprived, had failed to, make, to take a nap earlier that afternoon due to reasons beyond my control, and to top off my, my carpal tunnel syndrome in my right hand, years of typing on a laptop will do that, was basically playing up considerably. Oh my god, that's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Do you guys want to see the Tyranid? Uh, why am I even asking? Of course you want to see the Tyranid. Okay. Let me... Let me have a little look here. <clears throat> that looks pretty cool. Is that Hydra Colors? Wow. I didn't think that they were that, that way inclined in the terms of their color. Let's have a little look see. Here he is. The f there he is. Right. Oh my god. Guys, j j just put the model in the picture, not not the rest of your room. Um that gee, yeah, that looks really cool, man. That looks really cool. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. If those are the Hydra colours, why don't more people paint them in those colours? That's great. Like, if you really did a Nuln oil wash over that, like a good one, that would look like a Xenomorph. That's pretty cool. I like the look of that. Well done, you. Anyway, back to the hobby nightmare. <clears throat> I was working on giving some Termagants an, an, a Nuln oil wash. There they go. But I managed to nudge the, the wash bottle with my twitching right hand, sending it spilling all over the table and onto my jeans. It wasn't a small bottle either, it was one of the larger var varieties, so a decent amount of wash was knocked over. Accepting the error with several muted expletives, I began cleaning up the mess. My jeans were soaked, had leaked through, and so I had to undress and get them in the washing machine. Taking off my shoes and jeans, I quickly threw on a pair of jogging bottoms, but did not put my shoes back on. Keep in mind, this is the first of three bad situations. Just as I finished cleaning up, my daughter could be heard crying upstairs, having had a nightmare. I went upstairs to reassure her and put her back to sleep. I left several models on our kitchen table whilst doing so. Now, for the second. We have two Yorkie Poodle Crosses at home. Dude, if they destroy these models, I'd make a stew out of them. I would literally just knock them over the head, chop them up, and make a stew. Um, one, one is a very well-behaved and enjoys a fuss. The other, her daughter, is a chewer and generally not a nice dog, to me anyways. Unbeknownst to me, after leaving the table to attend my daughter, she had kept a keen eye on, on a squad of newly painted Tyranids I had used as a guide, three zoanthropes, 
or mind bugs. A pain to fit correctly, but enjoyable to paint. I'd been away from the table for about five minutes and knew instantly something was awry. One of the three zone troops I had, only two were present. Okay. I initially thought I had knocked it onto the floor. After a quick search, I found the younger dog chomping away on its head. Bits were everywhere. Shards of plastic and bits of sharp edged tyranid were scattered across the hardwood floor. I managed to pry the dog off the, mob, off the model and move the dog away. The model was absolutely ruined. This is the second piece of bad news. Yeah, that, that, that dog's in this stew. Yeah, anyone, anyone want dog stew? Yeah? My god. This is why... I know, I know it's not uh, applicable for everybody, but if you can, make your hobby space away from everywhere else. Either in your own bedroom, in your own office, wherever you need to put it, that is yours, and people can't get to it, that's where it goes. That's my, my rule of thumb, anyway. Now, remember when I said I had taken my shoes off earlier? Word of advice. If you deal with sharp bits of plastic, make sure you collect all the pieces up. Watch where you step. Inevitably, one piece will work its way into somewhere you don't want it to. In my case, it was the sole of my foot. One of the sharper uh, s slivers I had missed was directly under my heel as I lifted myself from my haunches, pushing fairly deeply into my foot. I yelped and fell down again, having been off balance. This, the sliver was about an inch and a half long and was buried fairly deep. I managed to pry away the errant piece of in intact, but was now left with a bleeding foot. A soon-to-be blood bruise inside my heel and a week of increased local agony every time I, I stood on said foot. Reassuring myself that I had been the worst bit of bad luck that evening, but unwilling to tempt fate, I packed my detritus up, put my paints away, and decided to wallow the rest of the night playing bulk gun and writing for a short story I am hoping to get published soon. Good lad! Good lad, dude, for you to do that, I'm such a wimp. I am the biggest wimp in the world. If I am overly tired, I'm doing nothing. Go fuck yourself. I'm doing nothing. I'm sitting here watching YouTube because it's the only thing I can mentally do. If I'm tired. Like, if I'm bone tired. I can't play video games. I can't write. I can't do anything. I'll, I won't be at my best. I need to be at my best to write. And I need to be at my best to enjoy video games. But if I can't do that, then I won't do them. Because I will not have my time ruined by me being tired, right? I know, I'm such a wimp, but like, good for you for powering through, man. That, that's incredible. That's awesome. Um, I hope to get the high fleet painted up soon before me and my wife move house in late August. I'm still a little sore about losing the model and the stained jeans, several washes, and it's still stained now. Yeah, um, yeah, a wash will not go out, mate. Uh, those jeans need to go in the bin. The uh, wash doesn't... Uh, baking soda, maybe, but like, I've... What, what dude uses baking soda? Come on. <clears throat> but given the horrors of real life, it isn't that bad. I am back on nights this evening, so cue work on a squad of gargoyles to escort a winged ty tyrant prime. Hopefully, I will get a nap this afternoon. Keep doing what you're doing and have a drink on me. Best regards, Matt. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Hopefully, you win the prize draw. That would be nice for you. Anyway, Aaron says, Hey, North. Sending good vibes your way. Today, I'll be sharing a relatively recent story that has had me questioning whether I was the hobby nightmare for someone else. I've been having this feeling a lot recently with my games. I win quite often against people with my fluffy armies that I make entirely for the purposes of making a cool army with a cool theme. Such as my all Phobos armoured marines army, all Gravis armoured marines army, or an all melee marines army composing of assault intercessors, blade guard, and anything else armed with a sword or claw of some description. I like making armies with a theme and then sticking to it, even if it means that I miss out on some of the more powerful synergies. At the time though, after the games I win, I often find that my opponent just didn't seem all that into it. I had to I had to remind them of the rules and even their army rules sometimes. I like to think I'm a casual player, but I'm not even I'm not even aware that I'm secretly being overly competitive, maybe. Um I'll get into the story, but no, I don't think so. I think you're just choosing the wrong, the wrong opponents, but moving on. On to the short story. So my friends and I have been getting back into 40k, 
while I had been building my forces of stealthy and tactical Phobos Space Marines for a time. My friend Dave had only just bought the Orc Combat Patrol. He had been painting way longer than me though, probably for about 15 years to my two years of painting experience, and spent about two to four hours on each model making his Orcs look both extremely detailed and unique. My Marines were fairly simple, but I absolutely adore the colour scheme I went for, heavily inspired by clone commandos from Star Wars Republic Commando, shown in the attached picture. Oh, back to these I go. Back to these I go. Ooh! Those look nice. Hello. I'm not normally a fan of greys. Well, that does look pretty nice. Let me just... Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like that. It looks pretty cool. Needs a wash, but looks good. Like, um... Yeah, I, I would... A few things on that model. Uh, Norn oil recesses. To make things stand out. And then get a lighter grey... And edge highlight the grey. So on his helmet, on his backpack, on his legs. That would look pretty cool. And then may maybe make make the red stand out a bit with some uh, gem wash or something. That would look pretty cool. But looks good. Maybe you like it. Looks awesome. Alright. <clears throat> Read the rest of it now. Okie dokie. Dave was looking for some games with me as he wanted to get back into the game. I obviously obliged, as I am always excited to play 40k. So our first game went without a hitch. We did two squads of Orc Boys and a war boss versus two squads of Incursors and the Captain. I barely won with my forces being mostly destroyed, but it was the most fun I'd had in ages. My marines were made for skirmishing, shooting and falling back, keeping the enemy at distance, only charging with their paired blades drawn if no other option was in sight. I gunned down the orcs as they ran towards me by killing most of them before getting into combat, but it didn't matter. Dave's war boss was the biggest and the baddest, and cleft my troops in, and my troops in twain. Only with one final shot from my captain's bolt carbine did the tyrant fall. A nice swingy game that had a great mini story to boot. We had a lot of fun, so I decided to do a few more games just like this. Just taking a few units of generally equal points and throwing them against each other slowly learning the game and introducing more rules bit by bit so I could familiarise myself and so Dave could learn at a steady pace. I had to remind him of his army rules and core rules every now and again, but that was okay because he was learning. Eventually, we had an actual thousand point game which was great fun. Dave won and was very pleased having wiped out my forces on turn 4. I took down half his orcs but he did a fantastic job. My Phobos Marines forward deployed in, in, in advantageous positions all over the battlefield. I was immediately in range of the Orc Horde and got the first turn gunning down the first wave. The Orcs quickly responded by making their way through the ruins blasting their sluggers. Another round of shooting from me saw more Orcs fall by the dozen, but then his Death Dread and War Boss got into melee and started wreaking havoc in my lines. I had held back a squad of Reavers and deployed them behind the Orcs for a counter charge, but to no avail. The Orcs' brute force was enough to stop any momentum I might have had. Dave lost many Orcs, but claimed victory in the melee, having killed my chief librarian in the first charge, leading to a quick and decisive victory. It was gloriously grimdark, and I loved it. I was a little sad for losing, but who isn't sometimes? I realised then that this was actually the first game that Dave had won against me. I only realised this because Dave made a big deal out of it, saying that he'd finally won against me. I honestly hadn't given it much thought, as I was just enjoying the battles, but maybe I was enjoying the battles because I was the one always winning. I never go into the game with the aim of winning. I always prefer what is fun and what makes sense within the story of the game rather than winning. It's precisely why my army is made only of Phobos armoured units, which is about seven of the of the hundred different marine units the faction has to offer. I felt I was limiting myself, but Dave obviously felt that I had an overpowered force or something. <clears throat> a few weeks later, we, we booked a table at the local games workshop for a thousand uh, for a thousand five hundred point game. Okay. 
They let you play in the Games Workshop? That's awesome. Don't name the Games Workshop. Do not name the Games Workshop in the rest of the story, please. If you do, I will bleep it out or not say it because they will get into trouble. So I don't want to don't do that. Uh, Dave had built a battle wagon and many more orc boys for this one so he could have some fire support and more boys for the green tide. He spent hours painting the wagon and magnetising all of his options and I could tell he was really proud of it. I was blown away by it and was impressed by his painting as usual. The man was an inspiration for me when it came to his painting and I could talk for hours with him about his techniques. When we arrived at the store, the whole gaming table was ours as it was a small store and we set up the battlefield lengthways. I saw no issue with this as I wanted the battle to be more drawn out before axes started flying into the faces of my marines. However, in hindsight, this was an unfair play on my part as I wasn't thinking of Dave, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Happens. An honest mistake, though. Phobos Marines in general have a special rule that allows them to forward deploy. So I staggered a line of varying ranged weapons so that even if my vanguard forces got caught in combat, they would be able to fall back receive su and receive supporting fire from the rear lines. Phobos armies also have a focus on shooting rather than combat generally. The orcs gathered in a blob at the end of the table. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like, like Reavers should be really good in close combat. That's what they're terror troops. Anyway, moving on. The game started with Dave moving up the board, but I began to, to notice a pattern. Dave had never once used an advance roll in any of our games. Whether he was aware of this, I didn't know. But when I let him know on the second turn, he was keen to keep the ability to fire his sluggers and shooters. Something he came to regret. When it came to my turn, I simply moved everything into position and laid down overlapping fields of fire. I was effectively blasting him off the table. I took down squad after squad, and even got his battle wagon down to about half health by turn 2. When his vehicle and orc ret rocks returned fire, they did barely anything. Yeah, orcs aren't very good at shooting. Orcs in general do not shoot well at all, even with their big guns, so it, it was frustrating not seeing those choppers and, and not ripping my, my marines apart. Dave managed to teleport a squad of orcs into my deployment zone to attack my snipers and suppressors but I just turned my Invicta Warsuit around and peppered the orcs with its firepower and mopped them up in melee. At this point, I was feeling a bit of a bad sport, as Dave had barely made it out of his deployment zone, and despite some good effort at the top of the turn 3, Dave called it quits, saying he was basically just waiting for me to shoot him off the table. I absolutely understood and packed up with him. Then we went to grab a drink and get some air. I went over to the store manager to ask for the orc codex. And he, and he politely took me aside and pointed out that it was unfair that we decided to play the, 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 the table, the, the, the field lengthways, because it didn't allow Dave to move his orcs up the field. However, he also said that he wasn't sure why Dave didn't in, immediately charge me as I, I was in range for a turn one charge because I deployed so close. At this point, I had a mini revelation and asked for the orc codex. Despite having picked Goffs as his faction and having the WA special rule, as the ramshackle rule for his vehicle, making it quite tough to wound, none of these rules had been used once. Dave was effectively playing with just his data sheets and nothing else. Okay. No army rules, and not even orc special rules, unique only to the orcs. While I felt bad for effectively ruining the day, I also had a moment of frustration and maybe even anger. No wonder he wasn't doing well, the guy wasn't even using half the rules in his fucking army book. Why did I bother learning my army's rules so intently if the other player was just going to do that and then get frustrated when they lose? Yeah, you've got a point. You've got a point. Now, we don't see this part of the hobby very often, right? This is somebody who is wanting to play fluffy games, keeps winning, and doesn't really understand why. And then he realizes that he's facing an even, an even more uh, fluffy customer. I'm going to make a recommendation. I'm going to make a diagnosis and a recommendation on treatment. Okay, uh, one page rules. Now, I know my friend, I know Aaron, you might not want to do one page rules, you might love 40k, but when you're playing this guy, I think one page rules would be a really, really, really good fit. Because the one page rules are more in-depth than people give them credit for. There are lots of special rules in there, 
There are lots of ways to make your army unique and your own. And I genuinely think it's a better game than Warhammer 40,000 by a long way. I think a lot of people who, who write to me com complaining about 40k or that their friends just aren't getting it or aren't getting into it. Dude, some people don't want to read through a whole tome. Some people don't have the time. They have uh, full-time, you know, careers, families, all all the other things. We can't all be uber nerds reading these things cover to cover. We can't, right? I don't. I can't. That's why I moved to one-page rules. I moved to one-page rules because I can't sit here keeping up with the meta every five minutes when it changes. That's what's going to do now with it being electronic, which is great. It's great for the gamers. It's great for the people in the hobby, but not for you know, not really for me. Um, it's not really for me. So I do one-page rules now. And the games that I have had of one-page rules have been amazing. Amazing. Legitimately the best games of 40k I've probably ever had. Yeah, give it a go. Give it a go. It would really help this guy. And he'd have a lot of fun. Continuing on. Either way, I really felt bad for making someone feel like they couldn't finish a game with me. I do try to win, but it's never my aim. And it's definitely never my aim to make people feel bad. Well, this thing... Dude, the way that you play that Phobos army, it would play the same way in one-page rules. That's what people don't seem to get. It would play exactly the same way. It's just most of the guff and the nonsense is taken out of the game. Completely taken out. And the game is so much quicker. Anyway. A few weeks later, Dave asked me for a game again as it was his birthday and he had the whole week off. And I wondered if I was up for a game on a Friday. I said yes with a bit of caution, hoping that this time would be better. I messaged him the day before the game and got no reply. I went to bed the evening not, not quite understanding why he wasn't getting back to me. Before I went to sleep, I asked if he, could, if he could let me know what was going on once he was up. I woke up to no message, and so I messaged him again. I waited around the whole day, and I just got ghosted. The man left me on scene for days later with no explanation. I should really message him and ask what's up, but I honestly don't have the energy or reason to. I think we both want different things from the game, even if I can't figure out what I want out of it, although I know that I don't like my time being wasted like that. I have started playing games with another lad, who has a Necron uh, Novok army, and while I win most of the time, he, was ap he has absolutely eviscerated me on many occasions because of his skill and godlike armies of destroyers. We are having great fun with the new addition, and I'm glad to have an opponent who I actually enjoy going up against. That's my story. Was I the nightmare in the situation? Should I maybe tone down my playstyle? I don't know. But what I do know is that I appreciate this channel so much and I love coming back every day to have a natter about who or what should not in fact be in the sea. Cheers, Aaron. Okay. Um, unless you've... I, I, I get a feeling that there's parts of this story that aren't all in the story. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? Because you, 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 you're telling me that you got frustrated with this guy. Yeah. But you don't tell me how you how you broached it with him. Did you broach it with him at all? Because if you went to him and said that you were frustrated with the way that he plays after he's lost nine games out of ten, um, <laughs> I can see why he doesn't want to play you anymore. Um, you know. But if you didn't, if you kept it to yourself and you just seemed annoyed, then I can also probably get why he doesn't want to play you anymore. That's not a slight on you. It really isn't. That's not a slight on you. Uh, this is just a miscommunication between two hobbyists who obviously want to play the game in different ways. He should be playing one-page rules, and you should be playing 40k. That's simply how it goes, right? And I would also encourage you to, to try one-page rules, see if you like them better. Because um, if you like balanced games, you're going to enjoy those. So yeah, I, unless you, there's things here that you're not telling me, um, I would say that no, you, you've done perfectly fine from what you've told me, but if, if you've let your attitude show towards how the way EDD plays, in a way... I can see why he doesn't want to play you, but again, that's no slight on you. It's just two players having miscommunication, right? There's no reason to rage here. There's no reason to, to call out either one of you. You both wanted different things. You were an adult about it, and you moved on. Him ghosting you is a bit of a dick move. I don't like that, you know? Um, be a man about it. You know, talk to people about things, and things work themselves out. Generally, if you talk to people about things that you see going on, things will work themselves out. So, yeah. I'd grow up if I was this guy and uh, get in touch and tell you why, you know, he doesn't want to play with you anymore. That sounds really wrong. Sounds like we're kids. Why do I die? As soon as I come back to the game, I'm immediately dead. I suck at bolt gun, dude. I'm the worst. The absolute worst. Anyway. 
Nick says, Hey North, hope you're doing well. I have a hobby nightmare for you. You can call me Nick. I got into 40k at the start of 8th edition and fell absolutely in love with the World Eaters. I even have a Khan the Betrayer half sleeve tattoo now so you know I'm addicted. I got into this hobby after losing my father and two good friends all in the same year and Warhammer was the distraction I needed to not lose myself. Okay, cool. Here's the thing. I wish Games Workshop, I wish, I wish, I wish they would lean... Okay. Back in the day, I got into trouble because I did a, a video called Games Workshop Moral Police where I was really infuriated with the fact that they'd gotten on board with the uh, BLM stuff, right? Um, not because of BLM's message, but because Games Workshop have no fucking place getting into politics. Absolutely none. Your place is not to tell me how to live my life or how to be a good person. Your place is to sell me stupid little plastic miniatures, shut your face, and get on with your job. Right? Cool. Moving on. Secondly, the hobby is amazing for mental health. That's where you should be concentrating, Games Workshop. You should be concentrating on mental health. Why your hobby is great for people who are about to lose themselves. But you didn't go for that, did you? And you've never gone for that. Why? Because Games Workshop don't give a shit about you, that's why. But they only give a shit about playing to the gallery. They just want to play to the gallery and make sure everybody knows how much of a virtuous, a virtuous a bunch of people that they are. They don't give a shit about you, the average hobbyist. They don't. They don't. If they did, the most, the, the most huge thing about this hobby is how it helps people mentally. That's the biggest positive of this hobby. Is how it helps people mentally get over things that would destroy them usually. That is such a wonderful, powerful thing, and yet they never, ever talk about it. They never talk about it. They never talk about mental health. They never talk about how it can help you. They never talk about maybe introducing somebody to Warhammer if they're having a hard time. Nothing. They virtue signal, though. Oh, shit, they do that. They do that a lot. That's why I've got no respect for them. Absolutely no respect for them. Like, the one the one truly good thing you do in this World Games Workshop if you is you give people this game that they save themselves with. And you don't bring attention to it. Not fucking once. Get in the sea. Shows you how much you care about people. Go fuck yourself. On to the hobby nightmare. Okay. <clears throat> Through a mutual friend, I met the focus of today's hobby nightmare. Let's call him Sam. At first, Sam was great. Invited us over to his house for cookouts and 40k. Sam was an Imperial Guard player. Fucking hell, sounds like a right shad, this guy. Cookouts? He's cooking? Get in the kitchen, son. We'll play some 40k, you get some curry on the go. Happy days. I asked him why he was why he chose guard, and he said because the law doesn't matter, and since it's a shooting game, he only wants to win. Okay, right, okay. I, I I'm I'm rescinding your Chad card, I'm taking that back. Sorry. Sorry. Don't care how good the curry is. I told him I picked corn because I like the law. He said, that's kind of stupid, but whatever. Okay, yeah, I'm also taking away your man card. Your man card is now rescinded. You can take that away and, and you can have this back when you stop acting like a little bitch, all right? That's when you can have that back. I ignored it and we had our first game after some food. Sam went uh, first shot. Sam went first. Shot my world eaters off the board, turn one. In addition to ground troops, he had nine lemon rust battle tanks. Nine? After he won, he told me to pick an army that doesn't suck. I told him that I'm not in it to win it. I just like them thematically. Again, he said, that's dumb. You're purposefully putting yourself at a disadvantage. Dude, I don't care how good this guy's curry is. I like how I've just decided this guy's making curry. But I, I, don't, I don't care how good this guy's curry is. It's going over his fucking head. Other friends in our group tried talk taking Sam down, but to no avail. Death Guard, Ultramarines, etc. Nothing worked. Until one day, I borrowed my friend's Imperial Knights. Here we go. <laughs> Sam agreed to play, and we went down to the local game store. You did it in public as well. Uh, it, it was a hard match, but I came out on top by a few victory points. Sam said, well, you beat me, but it doesn't count. You use Lords of War, and I don't have any. I said the entire army was Lords of War, so I couldn't avoid that. 
He said, well, I'm not counting this as a win for you. Being, uh, uh, bring back your chaos so I can blast them again. I never played with Sam again. Yeah, good. Good. Dude, I don't even know why you played this long with him. I still had him on Facebook, though, and he messaged me trying to trade my 2080 Super Graphics card for his 1060. <laughs> like, all right, guys. Right, one thing you don't know about me, right? I am a PC gamer, and I like graphics cards. Uh, I know quite a bit about graphics cards when it when it comes to 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 because I have to because I'm I'm always looking for good bargains. I've got a 3070 RTX right now, and it is the best card. Mwah, chef's kiss. It is my baby. It's the best card on the market for bang for your buck. Literally, I, I love it. Um, it never lets me touch wood. It's never let me down with the game. Always quick, always quiet, always cool. Brilliant. Uh, the 40 series, load of shite. Don't bother with them. Um, absolute nonsense. But so, when <laughs> if somebody wanted to trade a 2080 Super Graphics card for a 1060, that's like saying, um, hey man, you know, you've got a 5,000 point army of fully painted World Eaters that are really beautiful to look at. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to get into World Eaters. So, how about I trade you this My Little Pony DVD and I can have your World Eaters? Yeah. Go swivel. Get in the fucking sea. <clears throat> My card was much more powerful at, at, and at the time was worth hundreds more than his and so I told him so. He said, all right, I'll throw you in an extra 100 bucks too. Come on, you don't play PC as much, and I need it more than you. I told him no again. Dude, this guy's a right piece of work. This guy's a right piece of work. I want to believe that he's got something going on. Autism or something. But this guy is a... Oh my god. <laughs> Sometime later, at the release of 9th edition, Sam hit me up for the, fir for the final time. He asked me to come over as he needed my help with something. I lived down the street from him... And at the time, and so I went over. Sam had a shoebox full of 40k stuff. Our friend Steve's Tau Army. Okay. He said Steve hadn't picked these up in almost two years and was wondering what to do. That's fair enough. I said, dude, what do you mean? We'll just call him and ask. Sam conceded and I made the call on speakerphone. Steve, the Tau player, said we could have them as he was too busy with work and his kids to have get time to game. Alright, that's fair enough. Sam then asked if our friend Brandon would like them, as he was just starting out with Tau. I said, yeah. That would be that, that would make a, a, an awesome Christmas present for him. Sam then said, you think I'd just give these away? Hell no. He's going to buy these from me. Oh my god, are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? Okay, Sam is the Imperial Guard player, by the way. Uh, I think people get a bit excited and they don't name people earlier on in the story. Oh, no, he did. He did. He did. No, my bad. My bad. So, they've been given this Tau army for free. A full Tau army for free. Right? You want to give it away to a friend as a Christmas present, which would be really nice. And this Sam saying, no, he has to buy them from me. Okay. I said that was pretty scummy, as he had just come into those for free, and he'd make a friend of ours ha very happy if he just gave them to him. I even opened my wallet and offered to pay him $100 for the, for the box right there and then. Sam said he would sell these for magic cards, and Brandon should be able to afford his own models instead of being poor. Fucking hell. Right then I told Sam to go fuck himself and walked home. He said other shitty things in the past... That weren't hobby related, but I'll leave those out. Thanks for reading my story, North. You're a real Chad. And Sam, if you ever if you ever read this, I'm glad your fiance left you after catching you banging hookers. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, that took a turn. That took a turn. I want to hear about that half of the story, man. Don't just leave it there. Come back. Come back. Come back and tell me the second half. Oh my god. Thanks. And Sam, if you ever hear this, I'm glad your fiancé left you after catching you banging hookers. Seems like the type. Seems like the type. He's probably like Nickel and Dimeder as well. It's like, well, you didn't really suck it, so, you know, I'm only going to pay you 50 bucks, not 100 bucks, sorry. You know, that kind of a thing. Now get out of my trailer. Um, so, yeah, uh, I love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow, and I don't know what I'm going to do. It might be a ranty video tomorrow. I'm not sure. Or it might be a Q&A. I've got, all of a sudden, I've got an, an inundated... 
um, section of Q&A questions. We've got about 20 of them. So I might need to start making some headway on those. So I might do that tomorrow. We'll see. Um, oh, send me some hobby nightmares. I'm now down to my last five. So if you want to be read out in the next few weeks, now is the time to send me your hobby nightmares. Love you all a long time. Speak to you tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.